Okay, what we're going to do in our second example is to use cross-sections and contours to come up with another very commonly used function that we're going to see a lot of. Remember, we're not trying to find every possible function. We're not trying to find a wonderful technique that will help us graph everything. We're just trying to use these two things over and over and over to see how useful they are and come up with a nice set of graphs that we're going to be using a lot. The function we want to look at here is g of xy equals e to the minus quantity x squared plus y squared. So let's go start taking some sections and see what we can do. I can do contours, I can do sections. I think for this one, I'm gonna try sections first. Um, now remember what a section is. You plug in a constant for x or a constant for y and see what happens. Um, let me just write down that we're doing sections. And let's just plug in y equals zero. That's certainly a section. What I'm going to get uh, by putting in zero for y is e to the minus x squared. Now, if you don't remember this from algebra and you don't remember this from Calc 2, this is a good time to remind yourselves um, this is the bell curve. So this says if I chop at y equals zero, um, remember that's the equation of the xz plane, so I'm actually just using the xz plane going chop. What I'm going to see is just this bell curve. If I chop at x equals zero, so I'm going to put a zero in for x instead of y, what I'm going to get is z equals e to the minus y squared. Remember, this is x, this is z, this is y, this is z, and you get an identical looking bell curve. That says if you chop this way using the yz plane, uh, you get a bell curve. If I chop this way using the uh, xz curve, I, I, I get a bell curve. Um, that's kind of weird. Um, I think no matter what x value or y value we plug in, we're going to get a bell curve. Um, let me just give one example of that. It's not going to be that helpful, but what, what the heck. If I put in x equals c like this, what I'm going to get is z equals e to the minus. I'm going to get c squared plus y squared like that. I can rewrite this as e to the minus c squared times e to the minus y squared. Now, um, what does that mean? Remember, this is a constant. So if I chop at a different constant other than zero, what I'm getting is that same bell curve, but being multiplied by something that's smaller. So if I chop away from the origin, I still get a bell curve looking thing, but it's, it's been multiplied and made smaller. So the further away I move from the origin, um, the smaller the bell curve I get. I don't think that's that helpful in actually seeing what's going on. Um, so I'm gonna look at some uh, contours and to see if I can draw some conclusions. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with our first example of the bowl. So let's say I just try z equals negative one. Just see what happens. I'm looking at e to the minus x squared plus y squared equals negative one. Now that has no solutions because e to the something can never be negative. This tells us if I chop at height negative one, I hit nothing. What if I try to chop at height zero? Right? I'm going to get, uh, let's see here, I'm going to get e to the minus x squared plus y squared equals zero. What happens this time? Well, you can't take e and raise it to anything and get zero. So if I chop at height zero, I still don't get anything. Um, if I try chopping at height one, oh boy, I'm gonna get e to the minus x squared plus y squared equals one. Um, let's see here, what can I raise e to to get one? Well, what I'm going to find out is I'm going to get minus x squared plus y squared equals zero. So I'm gonna get x squared plus y squared equals zero. That says if I chop at height one, I only hit one point. Now, by the way, um, I kind of could have figured that out before because when we were taking cross sections, we kept getting bell curves, right? And so basically, if you chop at height one, all you're hitting is that top. Um, but at the moment, we still don't know what actually the other chops look like. And it's worse than that, actually. If I try something like z equals two, well, 
I know I know for my sections I'm not going to hit anything up there. Um, what happens if I try? Let's see. Some height that's between zero and one. So let's just say, remember we're being tasked to find all the all the contours. So here we go. I'm going to see e to the minus x squared plus y squared equals c. And I'd like to know what that is. Um, I'm going to take the ln of both sides. So I'm going to get minus x squared plus y squared equals the ln of c. Now remember, by the way, that if c is a number between 0 and 1, the ln is negative. So this actually makes some sense. So I'm going to get x squared plus y squared equals minus the ln of c. Like this. And what is that? That is a circle. And that actually kind of makes sense, right? This says if I chop at height, some height, but any height between zero and one, uh, what I'm going to get when I chop is going to be a circle, a circle. And the radius is going to depend on how high I chop. I'm not going to worry too much about this because I think we can now actually just uh, put what this is in. Um, this is actually a solid that you saw in Calc 2. Because what you're going to see is something that looks like this. And it's going to look like that. And you actually revolve this um, in Calc 2 to find a volume of something like that. If I put in the axes, I know it's going to hit like this. I know it's going to hit like that. I know it's going to hit like that. Um, and you get basically a two-dimensional bell surface um, that gets used in probability um, when two variables are involved instead of one. This is an incredibly useful function, um, and being able to find this graph is a great thing. And the more we can actually do with this in our zoo, um, the better off we'll be. Anyways, we found all the sections, we find all the contours, and we actually came up with the graph. Um, we get a two-dimensional bell curve. Um, if you don't like that, maybe it's a giant sombrero or something like that. Anyways. There's our graph, second person in our zoo.